Tonight on The After Show, we investigate, well, ourselves, and why you guys keep tuning into MTV week after week. How you guys are weaseling your way into producing content yourselves. Plus, what the critics have to say about MTV's latest endeavors. All this and more on The After Show. Welcome to The After Show. We've got a great show lined up for you today. But first of all, we've been thinking, maybe we need to get to know each other better. Why can't you guys get enough of us? And why can't we get enough of you, our wonderful audience? What makes our lineup of reality TV so irresistible? And what do you guys have to say about our latest endeavors? So, we thought we'd start with a brief overview of who we are. We're almost 30 years old, don't tell anyone, and we're still going strong as a force in popular culture. We also happen to be the world's most widely distributed, not to mention Gemini-nominated, television network, reaching more than 394 million viewers in 171 countries and territories worldwide. Our target audience is you, 12 to 34-year-olds, who comprise 33% of the U.S. population, our original demographic. We are the Canadian branch of the MTV brand, and that means that things run a little differently here up north. Not only does MTV Canada offer innovative lifestyle, talk, and documentary programming, but we reflect a uniquely Canadian culture and personality through a mixture of locally produced and globally shared programming. We are a Canadian program and managed business, wholly owned by CTV Inc., a division of CTV Globe Media. That's right. At MTV Canada, we have a commitment to 71% Canadian programming in prime time. You can see this on shows such as MTV Cribs. My thing. <laughs> which features Canadian celebrities and personalities, as well as on other shows, like ours. Perhaps one of the most important and relevant platforms that we offer is MTV.ca, a revolutionary broadband service that allows viewers to watch almost all of our programs whenever they want, wherever they want. This is why we're living to see 30 and beyond. But why is it that you love to love us or love to hate us? Why do you want your own reality TV series? Let's take a look at this next segment and find out. In today's day and age, reality TV is a whole new ballgame. While documentary-style soaps have been around since the 1980s, the latest programs bring in a new perspective, surveillance. Like documentaries, these shows aim for the articulation of the authentic self in order to depict moments of truth, but with a major emphasis on entertainment value. With an existing scholarship, this genre has been defined in many ways. A broad definition by Baker claims it's non-fictional programming in which the portrayal is presumed to present current or historical events or circumstances. Smith and Wood contend that it involves placing ordinary people before the camera and deriving some entertainment value from the perception of their activities being unscripted. Goddard believes that it's the edited footage of unscripted interactions, broadcast as a television series about participants naturally occurring social life. And Dowd refers to it as a genre of programming that, whether scripted or not, offers its viewers an ostensibly real depiction of both individuals and issues, where the key characteristic is that it asks audiences to view the individuals on the program as real. This genre is different from others because it places audience members on the opposite side of the entertainment, giving them the chance to be potential participants, create their own meaning, and compare and contrast their lives with the common and uncommon tasks performed by the show's participants. This element also gives the viewers the feel of the here and now, making them feel as if they are part of the action, and supports voyeuristic tendencies, ranging from the direct involvement of, of the participants to the detached observation of people's ordinary lives. Now that we know what reality TV is all about, let's talk about the different types that you can find on MTV and other channels. Voluntary contestant-based shows like American Idol, America's Next Top Model, and The Challenge Cut Throat rely heavily on the story of change because, let's face it, who doesn't love a makeover? The stars on these shows are ordinary people coming from all walks of life, blurring the distinction between contestant and viewers. Who knows? Maybe one of you could be the next Carrie Underwood. Docu-soaps are shows where viewers are passive observers, following people as they go about their everyday business. Participants are like fish in a bowl, while viewers are flies on the wall. The more popular docu-soaps take place within special living situations, courtesy of the producers where they are given specific tasks to complete, like on The Real World or Jersey Shore. <clears throat> These shows don't capture exceptional moments. Rather, they focus on the rhythm of the day-to-day -day lives of the characters. However, viewers only catch a glimpse of what's going on, 
as out of the 18,000 hours of footage, only nine make it on the broadcast. This makes producers rely heavily on the spontaneity of the real romance and conflicts that the participants live out. The uses and gratification theory examines the nature of audience involvement, the satisfaction one obtains from using various media channels, and the motives for using said medium. The main principles are that communication behavior is goal-directed, purposive, and motivated. People select communication vehicles to satisfy certain needs. Various social and psychological factors mediate people's communication behavior. A survey administered to reality TV viewers, a study done by Zizi Paparacci and Andrew L. Mendelssohn, demonstrated that the core viewing motives of those who perceived the content as more realistic were based on entertainment fulfillment, relaxation needs, and habitual pastime. On a secondary level, their reasons included social interaction and companionship needs. Interestingly, those with low mobility and low levels of interpersonal interaction were more likely to watch this type of programming to satisfy voyeuristic and companionship needs. The paradox theory examines how viewers apply authenticity when watching reality TV. An experiment of this theory, performed by Randall L. Rose and Stacey L. Wood, documenting journal entries of 15 participants' observations of reality programs, demonstrated the emergence of three paradoxes. The situation paradox. The evidence shows that when viewers found situational duality, which is a discovery of self-relevant goals or tasks in an entertaining fantasy locale, their enjoyment level was the highest. The paradox of identification. A major part of the engagement process depends on whether or not the viewer can make a personal connection to the participants of the show. The paradox of identification is concerned with the juxtaposition of the ordinary and the extraordinary traits of the players in the reality dramas. In other words, viewers like the villains as they were an essential part of the drama. Paradox of production. Similar to the two previous paradoxes, viewers find themselves liking and seeking balance between the natural narrative and the manipulated narrative, the spontaneous and the scripted. One of the participants felt that the producers played an important role in generating suspense and conflict, which kept him willing to tune in each week. It would seem that everyone loves MTV. Everybody wants their MTV. But there are those out there that feel differently. Although Jersey Shore has helped us see our first consistent gain in ratings in three years, some of our viewers and critics feel that the characters on the show are portraying Italian Americans in a very negative way. While ratings may be as golden as a spray tan, it seems that we may be receiving lumps of coal from some of you this holiday season. We offer a forum for community feedback on our website, and many of you have been really verbal about your opinions on the Jersey Shore phenomenon, among other things. For example, after the first season of Jersey Shore aired, Alex commented, Hey everyone, I'm dead set on getting this garbage off MTV, but I need your help. Too long have they peddled their thinly veiled sewage to us. This show is the last straw for me. I'm not one for censorship, but this corporation has completely abandoned its social responsibilities. As an Italian-American, I am beyond offended. This is blatant racism. What if they were portraying African-Americans, Hispanics, or Asians like this? It's unacceptable in any form. They are degrading an entire culture with their filth. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, which we openly accept. But the ratings do speak for themselves, and it would seem that most of you just can't get enough of the shore. However, we must abide by the rules of the Canadian Broadcast Standard Council, which is a non-government organization created by the Canadian Association of Broadcasters to administer standards established by its members. MTV has been criticized by both viewers and academics as being in violation of several clauses in the CBSC Code of Ethics, including the clause of general programming, human rights, and sex role stereotyping. One of the teen mothers on MTV's Teen Mom Amber has physically and verbally abused the father of her child. This behavior has viewers concerned that the content of the show is in violation of Section 8.0, Violence Against Specific Groups of the Canadian Association of Broadcasters Code of Violence, which states that broadcasters shall not telecast programming which sanctions, promotes, or glamorizes violence based on race, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, gender, sexual orientation, age, or mental or physical disability. So we hope we didn't bore you all to tears, but that instead, you learned why reality TV is an ever-growing genre. Now you know why you won't be changing the channel anytime soon. Nobody's perfect, including MTV. We work hard to accurately portray the groups and individuals on our show, because we know that we reach so many of you. Since we've covered all the bases, we'll leave you with this. We accept as reality the fantasy that we co-produce. Deep, eh? Right. We hope you all had fun, because we know we did. We'll see you all next time on The, the After, After Show. Show.